said, My house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Many people know that verse and they get excited about it. And normally it's interpreted to mean that that the uh, quote unquote church is going to be a place of multiculturalism and all that type of thing. And that's not exactly what it's talking about. I want to bring us back to Isaiah 56 and looking specifically now at verse three, because the context of that passage, that scripture, that pasuk, that my house will be a house of prayer for all nations, is actually talking about non-Jews who are converting to the covenant, who are embracing the God of Israel, and by extension, of course, or, or actually by entry, the Messiah of Israel, and taking hold of the commandments. That's really what it means. So what, what Hashem is saying is that my house is going to be a house where people from Jewish backgrounds and non-Jewish backgrounds, both embracing the covenant, are going to come and pray and worship. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve Him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship Him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Now, by the way, some of your Bibles, New King James and ESV, there in that last verse, instead of saying exiles, it says outcasts. And so Isaiah is addressing here foreigners, eunuchs, and outcasts. Basically, all those who feel excluded, God wants to welcome all, but there's also here this implied rebuke of, of those among the Jewish people who felt like they were a part of this exclusive club. Even sing it, out. sing it out. Camp shirts blinging out. Blingin out. We gon' shine Blingin with these laws. What you be about? You be about. Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. Welcome to uh, Biblical Histories. Today's topic, we're going to deal with Isaiah 56. So, I need y'all to be patient. We're going to go over some stuff before we actually get to Isaiah 56. But it's so that you will have an understanding of what's going on. We can't do the Christian thing. We can't do that. We can't just go to something and be like, oh, that's what it means verbatim. No, we can't do that. God is a God of knowledge, and by that knowledge, actions are weighed. So let's start off with what we usually do. Instruction that was given to Christ. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 4, I believe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Book of Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 4. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel. And speak with my words unto them. Right. That's why Christ says in the New Testament, My Father have given me a commandment, 
these scriptures. <clears throat> so, um, let's go to Isaiah 56. Let's read verse 1, and then we're going to jump around and go to some precepts so that we can get understanding. I've seen, so there was a brother that came up to us when we were um, at camp last Sabbath at the Two Street Festival. And he just kept, it was like, let's go to Isaiah 56. See that, brother? See what it say? Okay. Yeah, I see what it said. I've seen people use it many times on Facebook. I've seen people run up on Israelites. Uh, Sam Sh Shamoon saw him run up on GMS. But it's just one of, one of the verses that uh, people in Christianity used to try to say that God accepts everybody when that couldn't be further from the truth. So read verse 1. Right. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. So, this is what we're dealing with today, Isaiah 56. So, in here, it's talking about the stranger. So, we're going to go back and show there's more than one stranger. You have strangers of Israel, and you have the strangers that are of the other nations. It does good. People are taught in Christianity that whenever you see stranger, Gentile, or heathen, it, that it always means the other nations. It couldn't be further from the truth. So let's go directly to the commandments. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Look at these ordinances of the Passover. <clears throat> yeah, start at verse 37. <clears throat> the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot, mm -hmm. that were men beside children. Right, so, uh, so the men of Israel, their wives, their children, left out of Egypt. Read verse 38. Verse 38. And a mixed multitude mm -hmm. went up also with them, mm -hmm. and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. So a mixed multitude of people of other nations followed us out. They came out with us. Now watch this. Now jump down to verse 43. These ordinances of the Passover. Pay attention. Verse 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So, this is, it's going to seem confusing. You have the Israelite, that's your brother, but he's still a stranger. And then you have the other nations that are strangers. Uh, go ahead, bro. Verse 44. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Right, so what this is going to if I'm serving my brother, I'm working for him. I'm sojourning with him. If I want to keep the Passover, he has to make sure that I'm circumcised and I can keep the Passover with him. Go ahead. Verse 45. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. Read, read, it, again. read it again. Verse 45. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. So someone of another nation cannot eat of the Passover, but the, they both are strangers. Hmm. Read, I didn't want to plan on this, but read verse 46. I'll show you something else. Verse 46. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad. Right. You cannot. This lamb, which represents Christ, you cannot carry it abroad. It has to stay within the house of Israel. Finish that verse out. 
shall not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Right. So when Christ said, I come in the volume of the book, when you look at these commandments, it's talking about him too. 100. Now give me, let's go to uh, Leviticus 25. I think I'm going to hit some more stuff that I didn't plan on. Um, Leviticus 25, just real quick. We're showing you that there's a stranger that is your brother, and then there's a stranger that's of another nation. Um, give me verse 35. Pay close attention. Book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 35. And if thy brother be waxing poor and fallen in decay with thee. With thee. He is fallen in decay with thee. Go ahead. Then thou shalt relieve him. Mm-hmm. Yea, though he be a stranger. Though he be a stranger. He's sojourning with you. So he's a stranger. It's not, it's not his land. He could be from another tribe. He's a stranger. Go ahead. Or a sojourner. Mm -hmm. That he may live with thee. That he may live with thee. So you have the stranger that is your brother. We're gonna, I'm going to show you something else. Um, deal with the Levites. But now, so you have the stranger that is your brother that's sojourning with thee. Now, um, give me verse 42. Verse 42. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Right, so our brothers and sisters, we're not supposed to sell them as bondmen. We, as a nation, are the servants of the Lord. Now, verse 44. Verse 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, mm -hmm. of them shall ye buy, mm -hmm. and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. See, they shall be your possession. Your brother can't be your possession. Your brother is the Lord's servant. But the heathen, these particular strangers, they can be your possession. Read, read the next verse. Verse 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession that they shall be your bondmen forever. They shall be our bondmen forever. Come on. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. Right. All praises to the Most High. So when you, you know, in Christianity, you don't deal with no laws. But this is where you get all the knowledge from. This is where everybody, Paul, Peter, Christ, everybody's leaning on the commandments. Everything is based on the commandments. Now, give me, let's go to, uh, let's go to Numbers. I want Numbers. I'm not sure if it's 2 or verse 4. No, matter of fact, it's Numbers 1. It's Numbers 1, and then I think it's Numbers 3. So, um, the service of the tabernacle, moving the tabernacle, doing the service to the Lord, doing the sacrifices and all of that, that was given to the Levites. And the Lord is very specific, and he's very serious about everything. Because if you keep, remember, um, um, Nadab and Abihu, Aaron's sons, they burnt the wrong incense, the wrong fire, and they instantly got put to death. The Lord, he, he's not playing. He's very serious. Now watch this. See if y'all pick up on this. Uh, Numbers chapter 1. Give me 50. 50 and 51. All right. Book of Numbers chapter 1, verse 50. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony. Mm-hmm. 
and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, mm -hmm. and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Right, so it's their job. And you have the tabernacle here, and they camp around it. No one can approach to that. Watch. Go ahead. Verse 51. And when the tabernacle set it forward, the Levites shall take it down. Mm -hmm. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. Mm -hmm. And the stranger, the stranger that cometh nigh, shall be put to death. So anybody outside of the tribe of Levi, if they approach to it, they will be put to death. Why are they being called strangers? Because this ordinance was given to the Levites. Anybody outside of the, the Levites will be considered a stranger. They from another tribe. Another tribe. Verse. Yeah, verse 3. Chapter 3 and verse 38. Book of Numbers, chapter 3, verse 38. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary mm -hmm. for the charge of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So again, you can't approach to the tabernacle. That's specifically for the Levites. If you do, ye shall be put to death. Now, give me Exodus 29 and 33. So you have <clears throat> these ordinances with, with sacrifices. So you have some that the uh, high priest can eat. Then you have some that the uh, other priest can eat. Then you have some, you know. But all of this is for the Levites. There's a certain order to it. There's ordinances. Um, give me verse 32 and 33. We'll make this point here. Book of Exodus, chapter 29, mm -hmm. verse 32. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram, mm -hmm. and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made mm -hmm. to consecrate and to sanctify them. Mm -hmm. But a stranger shall not eat thereof, because they are holy. Right. A stranger should not eat thereof. So only Aaron and his sons could eat this flesh. Anybody from another tribe was considered a stranger. It's that simple. What, what they're teaching in the churches and at these theology schools is a straight up lie. Your doctrine is supposed to come from Christ to Israel, to the to righteous trees that can give you the understanding, not our enemies. Now give me... Uh, Oh, man, yeah, so now we're going to touch on the northern kingdom being called strangers, man. 1 Kings 15. I don't know how many people know, but uh, northern kingdom verbatim is called strangers. It's always been on my spirit since coming into the truth is to go at the lies of Christianity. I, just, I do not like how, I'm sorry, 2 Kings 15. Gotcha. I hate the lies of Christianity. I hate seeing my people deceive. Yeah, 2 Kings 15 and verse 29. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 29. In the days of Pekah, the king of Israel, mm -hmm. came Tiglath-Pileser. Tiglath-Pileser. Go ahead. The king of Assyria. And took... Ejon. E, thank you. Ejon and Abel, Abel, excuse me, 
Abelbeth, Ma'ak, and Jonah, the Kadesh, and Kadesh, and Hazar, and Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. Right, so because of the northern kingdom going off into idolatry, the Lord didn't do it right away. It took time, but he had the Assyrians come and take the northern kingdom captive. <clears throat> Took him into Assyria. And we're going to show y'all, we're going to read this first, then we're going to show you in scholarship that the so-called white man, they know this history, yet they still feed you lies. Now give me chapter 17. Give me verse... Started five. Book of Second Kings, chapter seventeen, verse five. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land, and went up to Samaria, and besieged it in three years. That's so. That's Northern Kingdom. Northern Kingdom was being ruled out of Samaria. That's the capital. That's why Christ is talking to the woman at the well, a woman of Samaria. Don't let them fool you. Like the good Samaritan. That ain't talking about somebody of another nation. Go ahead, bro. Verse 6. <clears throat> In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria mm -hmm. and placed them in Halal and in harbor by the river of Gozen and in the cities of the Medes. And in the cities of the Medes. We're going to read this also in this book we got. We're going to touch a little scholarship. Now, they know this. They know that the nation was split into two and, and being called two nations. You read that in Ezekiel. You see it in uh, John um, chapter 10, and you see it in John 11. But they say Jews and Gentiles. Yo, it's, there's more Israelites than just the Jews. So anyway, now jump to verse 20. Verse 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Hold on. So he rejected the northern kingdom because of their sins. They got all these high places. They're worshiping these golden calves. They got their own feast days and all this stuff. So he rejected the whole seed of Israel. He rejected the northern kingdom. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. And afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of the spoilers. Until he had cast them out of his sight. Until he had cast them out of his sight. He cast them out. They are outcast. Go ahead. Verse 21. But he rent Israel from the house of David. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord mm -hmm. and made them sin a great sin. Worshiping golden calves, idolatry. The punishment for that is death. Go ahead. For the children of Israel walked all, excuse me, walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them. Right, go ahead. Verse 23, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria until this day. Right. So he had the northern kingdom removed. So now we're going to go. Now we're going to show you that you had some that did not get taken away. All of the northern kingdom did not get taken away. But they going to call them something in particular. Second Chronicles 15 and verse Nine, then we're going to Second Chronicles 30. Let me get there. I don't want to turn my pages. Yeah, here we go. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 9. Book of Second Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 9. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin. And the strangers, strangers, go ahead, with them out of Ephraim uh -huh. and Manasseh uh -huh. and out of Simeon, uh -huh. for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance 
when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So when they saw that the Lord was with him, they're like, okay, we're going to go and keep, you know. Anyway, it's calling them, these brothers of the northern kingdom, verbatim calling them strangers. Strangers. Second <laughs> uh, Chronicles 30. All right, let's verse, start at verse 5. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Take a little, take our time a little bit. We're going a little fast. So we, we, we're just trying to prove that all, you can look all through the scriptures and see that the northern kingdom of Israel is being called strangers. Now, are they the only strangers? No, because, and we're going to touch that, touch this. When you look at the law, um, if you're a sinner, you're also a stranger. You're going to be cut off from your people. You're going to be alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. You're going to be a stranger, a stranger to the covenants, like you read in Ephesians 2. So start at verse uh, 5. Book of Second Chronicles, chapter 30, <clears throat> verse 5. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover mm -hmm. unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. Right, so you go into, you go into 1 Kings 12 and you see the split. And what they did was they built two golden calves in two different cities. And then they made a feast day. Like we have our feast day. We have tabernacles. And, you know, the 14th day, even in the seventh month. They ordained a feast the uh, 14th day, even in the eighth month. Wickedness. Making up their own feast days. Um, so they hadn't, you know, they hadn't come and had Passover at Jerusalem where you're supposed to have it. In a long time. Long time. So that's what it's going into. Now, so, um, they're sending out this decree telling them to come and keep the Passover. That would be righteous. Go ahead, verse 6. Verse 6. So the post went out with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel mm -hmm. and Judah. Mm -hmm. And according to the commandment of the king saying, Ye children of Israel, Turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. All right, hold on, because this is very important. <sighs> Ye children of Israel. So these letters, these posts, is going out to all Israel. Remember, the northern kingdom was taken captive. But there were some that did not get taken away. All of them did not get taken away. And it's showing you right here, right now. Um, he said, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Turn again. Remember this, because when we get to Isaiah 56, it's going to say, take hold to the covenant. If you're not of the stock of Israel, you can't take hold to nothing. The, the Lord has his arms stretched out to Israel for you to repent and turn back to him. Not for other nations to turn to him. They can't. He has, he has no covenant with them. Go ahead, bro. And he will return to the remnant of you. See, exactly. You If you, this remnant of Israel, if you turn to him... He's going to turn back to you. Go ahead. That are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. Exactly. That the ones that have escaped, they have escaped. They didn't get carried off. Go ahead. Verse 7. And be not like your fathers. Uh-huh. And like your brethren, mm -hmm. which trespass against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation 
as you see. Right. Right. So, oh, we're good right there. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to pull um, one more verse. Go to verse 25. So, this is after Passover, I think. Yeah, so they, they, they've kept Passover. Watch what they do afterwards. Verse 25. Verse 25. And all the congregation of Judah with the priest and the Levites and all the congregation that came out of Israel mm -hmm. and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and, and, and they dwelt in Judah rejoiced. So strangers came out of the land of Israel and they dwelt um, in Judah. My point exactly. So Israel, even both kingdoms, people in both kingdoms is called strangers. These strangers are Israelites. Matter of fact, give me uh, give me the, uh, 31 and verse 1. Book of 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 1. Now, when all this was finished, all Israel that were present went out to the cities of Judah mm -hmm. and break the images in pieces. All praises. And cut down the groves and threw down the high places mm -hmm. and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin. And Ephraim also, and Manasseh, until they had utterly destroyed them all. Damn, see that? See that? We're in whoredom all over the place. Northern and Southern Kingdom. So it keeps mentioning them. You'll see this in Chronicles, and you'll see it in Kings. The Lord is angry. He keeps talking about their abominations. Them worshiping idols. Go ahead. Then all the children of Israel returned, every man to his possession. Into their own cities. So they return into their own cities. So that's why you have like the woman at the well. They go, see? See? The Samaritan woman. That Samaritan woman was Israel. 100%. Just have to do some reading. Can't let, you know, pastor dictate everything. So anyway, that said, um, we're going to hit some scholarship. The first book... I can't remember how long ago I got this, but it's the Bible history, history of Judah and Israel from the decline of the two kingdoms. Um, I bought this. I only, I didn't get much out of it because right after I got this, I was trying to find out, you know, a quick way to find the scriptures. And then right after I got it, I did a class with Raphael. And he hit Second Kings. He hit the split of the kingdom. I was like, damn, I don't even need this joint. <laughs> but it's just going to back up what we read. They already know. They just teaching us lies. All right, bro, you can do that. Go ahead and do that. All right, so we're on page 113. See, it says Shalmaneser. We read about him in Second Kings. Um, I'm not going to read all of this. I just wanted to point out, like, you have... Tiglath Pileser right there. And then you have Shalmaneser the fourth. See, Shalmaneser. Just showing you that these people know. These scholars know they have done their homework. They just trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Now see uh page 116. Exile of Israel. See, it says Gozan. We read that. That's one of the places. Where they carried the northern kingdom to. Yep, see? Right here it says they were placed on the Kabor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Goes on into the Euphrates. Um, you read about that in Second Ezra 13. So... Look at that. It says the account of the ten tribes by Josephus. As little to our knowledge. But they know that the kingdom was split. They, I'm sure they know that they were called strangers. But they're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell us. That's why they're the deceiver. All right. Now we're in History of the Jews by Hannah. Adams. Let's see. So, 
The northern kingdom was carried on the other side of the Euphrates. So watch this, y'all. Um, this is after the destruction of the, sec of the second temple. You had converts. You had white Jews that went over to India. And you also, you had northern kingdom Israelites that were there. Watch this. It says, the white Jews live on the seacoast and have commerce with foreign nations. The black Jews, the, this is talking about the northern kingdom that was carried away during the time of Shal, Manasseh, Tiglath, Pileser, and all them, um, live chiefly in the interior of the country. The Hindus call them Israeli. They call themselves Beni Israel, which means sons of Israel and not Jews, the northern kingdom Israelites. For their ancestors did not belong to Judah, but to the kingdom of Israel. They consider themselves to be descended from those tribes which were carried away at the first captivity. In some parts of the east, the Ben Israel never heard of the second temple. That's because they were carried away. This was around 721 BC, I believe. Um, the white Jews of Cochin despise the black Jews. Of course, because like Genesis 3 said, I won't put enmity between thee and the woman. There's hatred between Israel and Edom. The So the white Jews of Cochin despise the black Jews as being of an inferior caste and do not approve of intermarriages with them because they do not belong to the second temple. Well, guess what? You're converts. You're converts anyway. You're just like Herod and Agrippa and those people. These are white converts. Those that say they are Jews and are not. They fled also. Phew. All right. Um, I think there's one more page I want to go to. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this, y'all. This is page 538. It says, but there is another body of Jews, not a colony, but a kingdom of Jews, to which this society may also address itself. And that is the 10 tribes. For the 10 tribes so long lost have at length been found. It has been sufficiently ascertained by the investigation of the learned in India that the Afghan and Piran nations consist of the descendant of the Jewish tribes of the first dispersion. See that? They know it's the northern kingdom still calling them Jewish tribes. What is wrong with these people? There's one tribe called Judah, but somehow the entire nation is called Jewish. You talk about having a mental block. So, but they know, they say that they... They supposed to be lost, but they know where they are. Why isn't this? Why is this esoteric? Why is it that people don't know this? Because it's been hidden. It's been hidden from you so that you don't understand who you are. Uh, so Dr. Buchanan says, when I was in the south of India, I asked the black Jews where their brethren, the great body of the 10 tribes were to be found. They answered promptly that they were to be found in the north in the regions adjacent to Chaldea, the very country whither they were first carried into captivity. Mm. I'm not going into the next page, but see that down there? <coughs> that the Afghans were Jews. So you have Afghanistan, Pakistan. Our people are all over there, y'all. All right, that's going to do it for this. Next, we're going to Benjamin of Tudela. All right, family, so this book is um, it's a very important book. I really love this one. The Itinerary of Benjamin of Tudela. Now, this uh, he was a Sephardic Jew, a real Sephardic Jew. Um, <clears throat> he's from Tudela, Spain, 
with the Spanish Jews, the black Jews. And this is around the 12th century. Now, what he did that was so important is he was looking for the dispersed Israelites. He was looking for the dispersed of Judah and the outcast of Israel. And so he's documenting what he saw. So in particular, we read in Kings and in, a, in, a, in the last book about how Israel, the northern kingdom, had been um, taken into cities of the Medes. So watch what he says. <clears throat> From this mountain, it is a journey of 20 days to Hamadan, which is is the great city of Media, where there are 30,000 Israelites. So when it says Israelites, he's talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. Watch as I read on. In front of a certain synagogue, there are buried Mordecai and Esther. <clears throat> um. Let me, I'm going to pick up right here. It says, four days onward in Shiraz, which is the city of Fars, and 10,000 Jews live there. See how he makes, it, he makes it a point. There's a difference between Jews and Israelites. He understands you have those of the northern kingdom and you have those of the southern kingdom. Now, the, the southern kingdom are Jews. The others are are called Gentiles or strangers. Uh, thence it is seven days to Gazan, the great city on the river Gozan, where there are about 80,000 Israelites. Making sure that you see there's a distinction. And it's all throughout here, all throughout this book. He keeps making that distinction. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to another page that I didn't plan on doing, but it's for edification. Okay, here we go. Here's page 70. It says, such are their superstitious practices. And with sense mm, throughout the island, including all the towns there, live several thousand Israelites. The inhabitants are all black and the Jews also. The later are good and benevolent. They know the law of Moses and the prophets, and to a small extent, the Talmud and Halakha. So the Israelites and the Jews are all black. And there's a separation. The northern and southern kingdom, the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and the strangers. All right, that's going to do it for Benjamin of Tudela. All right, all right. So we went over, uh, you know, we went back into the law to show you about the strangers, your brother. Um, then we went over the history of the Northern Kingdom, how they became strangers. And then we'll show you some scholarship showing the separation. So now that we have some underlining, uh, underlying understanding. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 56. Uh, look at it the proper way. And so <clears throat> you, should, you should understand what's going on uh, in here because you know the Lord only came for Israel. The law is only for Israel. The covenants are only for Israel. Everything is about the Lord and his own people. That's what this book is about. So, start at verse 1 again. Um, book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be mm -hmm. revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, mm. and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. 
Right. So it's it make, Exodus 20 and verse 8. Book of Exodus. Chapter mm. Chapter 20 and verse 8. Man, start at one. Give me one. All right. Book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So he brought Israel out. Strangers followed Israel, but he brought Israel out. And he's given these commandments to the Israelites. Now verse 8. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Go ahead. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Right. This is given to the children of Israel. And you're not going to see where it said the servant, the heathen, the foreigner of another nation can take hold to this. You can't. The covenant is only made between the Lord and Israel. Back to Isaiah 56. Uh, Pick up at, um, at three. Yeah, at three. All right. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord. Hold on. So remember, the Lord's arm is stretched out still. We read that in um, 2 Chronicles 30. He said, return to me and I'll return to you. Right. That's to Israel. Go ahead. Speak saying. The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Mm. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. I am a dry tree. So we're going to deal with this verse right here. Mm. The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Now, why would someone of another nation be saying that? When did the Lord separate uh, the other nations from his people? The moment he chose us. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Leviticus 18. I think I want Leviticus 18. I think. This kind of hit me a minute ago. Mm. Yep. Give me verse 29. So this is talking of, so we come out of Egypt and the Lord is like, these other nations, they did this, they did this, this, and this. I'm commanding you not to do these things. But go ahead, read that. This is what happens if you do these things. Book of Leviticus chapter 18. Matter of fact, start at 27. Gotcha. So they understand. Book of Leviticus chapter 18, verse 27. For all these abominations... <laughs> Have the men of the land done, mm -hmm. which were before you, and the land is defiled. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That the land spew not, excuse me, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. Uh -huh. Come on. Verse 29. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Shall be cut off. From among their people. Remember we read the northern kingdom. It, they were cut off. This is in the commandments. If you do these things. You're going to be cut off. Um, let me see. I want, uh, Exodus 31. Cut off from among your people. Exodus 31 and give me uh, yep 14 book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 14 mm -hmm. Come on. you shall keep the Sabbath therefore for it is holy unto you it's holy unto you unto Israel go ahead everyone that defileth it mm -hmm. so remember now remember Isaiah 56 Said, um, 
you don't defile the Sabbath day. But we have brothers and sisters that defile the Sabbath day. Watch what it said. Go ahead. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Go for ahead. Who, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut, cut off, off from amongst his people. He shall be cut off from amongst his people. That's what Isaiah 56 is dealing with. Everything goes back to the commandments, to the law, and to the testimony. Now give me verse um seventeen. Verse seventeen. It is stop, sixteen. Give me sixteen and seventeen. <laughs> All right. Verse sixteen. Wherefore the children of Israel, the children of Israel, go ahead, shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Perpetual, everlasting covenant. Everlasting covenant. Another nation cannot grab hold to this covenant. Go ahead, bro. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. See that? It's between the Lord and the children of Israel. I don't care what they say in the uh, Latter-day Saints, whatever, whatever they call, the Seventh-day Advantageous, whatever. The covenant is not between you and the Lord. It's between the children of Israel and the Lord. Go ahead. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Right. All praises to the Most High. Now, back to Isaiah 56. And then we're going to read that again. And when we get to the last part, we're going back to the commandments again. All right. We read uh, verse 3. No, what was it? I think he was at four. All right, four. I got you. Book of Isaiah. No, no, you're right. Three. You're, you're right. Three, three again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Mm -hmm. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Now, why is he mentioning a eunuch? What's this got to do with the other nations? Why is he mentioning a unit? And behold, I'm a dry tree. So a dry tree would be a tree with no fruit. It's unfruitful. Um, and a tree is a similar to for men. We're supposed to be righteous trees. Give me Isaiah uh, 61 and verse 3. Isaiah 61 and verse 3. Book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, mm -hmm. that they might be called trees of righteousness, mm -hmm. the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So a dry tree is not the planting of the Lord. Basically, you're a tree that's cut off. Um, give me... Let me see what I want. Give me Daniel 1. I'll show y'all something. So, Daniel, they're in captivity. They're in Babylon. <clears throat> the temple had been destroyed. And they're in Babylon. And they're being obedient. Um, give me verse... Goodness. Give me verse 3. Alright. We're gonna make this real short. Book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and all excuse me, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. 
Now jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Just making this point, y'all. Go ahead. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Right. So this will be uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were made to be eunuchs. So um, if you were a eunuch, there's certain things you can't do. So we're going to touch that right now. But although the Lord was dealing with them, there was no temple. There was no temple. So now, um, Deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy 23. Like, I tell you, Christianity is like you jump into the middle of a book and start reading and think you know what's going on. Give me verse 1. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones or have his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Right. You can't enter into the congregation of the Lord. That's why this is being said. But in Christianity, they don't tell you nothing. They don't tell you nothing. You're just supposed to read something and think that verbatim you got the understanding. That is not so. Give me Leviticus 21. And verse... Give me verse. Oh, yeah. Give me verse 18. Start at 18. Book of Leviticus. 17. 17. Okay, 17. Book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 17. Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations, that have any blemish. Any blemish. Go ahead. Let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. Right. You can't do the service of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 18. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, mm -hmm. he shall not approach a, a blind man or a lame uh -huh. or he that hath a flat nose mm -hmm. or anything super. Superficious. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 19. Or a man that is broken footed mm -hmm. or broken handed. Go ahead. Or crook back or a dwarf or, excuse me, or that have a blemish in his eye or be scurried or scabbed or have his stones broken. Or have his stones broken. A eunuch cannot do the work of the Lord. You can't have a blemish. So, uh, now let's go back to Isaiah 56. But the, this is the point we're making. Everything is based off of the law. You just cannot read something verbatim and say, oh, yeah, I know what this means. That's why everybody be struggling with Paul. Well, Paul contradicted himself. No, he not. You need to go and read the, uh, <laughs> the law and the prophets. Open and ask the Lord to open your understanding up. Everything Paul's saying is right on point, but you have to understand the things that have been written aforetime that are written for our learning. <clears throat> now, uh, Isaiah chapter 56. Pick up at four. Yeah, you can read four again. Book of Isaiah chapter 56, verse four. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me mm -hmm. and take hold of my covenant. Take hold of my covenant. Now, give me, uh, I'm on two free shelves, both of them in Isaiah. Isaiah 9. And give me verse 12. Book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 12. The Cyrenians before, mm -hmm. and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. And they did. Go ahead. 
for all this his anger is not turned away, mm -hmm. but his hand is stretched out still. His hand is still stretched out to Israel. You repent and you can take hold of the covenant. Repent. Verse 21. Verse 20. Verse 21. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. Mm -hmm. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. His hand is stretched out still for Israel. He never stretched his hand out for the other nations. Somebody, if you can't prove it wrong, he never stretched his hand out for the other nation, saying, I will accept you. If that's in the law, they cannot be Accept it for you is written in the law. And like Christ said, the scriptures cannot be broken. So somebody is lying. Isaiah 5. And 25. Mm. This is my um, ensign scripture. I never get to use it though. <laughs> Book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 25. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, mm -hmm. and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills did tremble, mm -hmm. and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, mm -hmm. but his hand is stretched out still. He's angry with us, but his hand is stretched out still. Like Isaiah 56 said, take hold of the covenant. Repent. Bethink yourself. Repent ye therefore, and he will accept you back. Mm. All right, read verse 26, just so they're, um, this is a good uh, ensign precept right here, y'all. Verse 26. Though he scattered us among the nations for our punishment, watch what he's going to do. Verse 26, and he, excuse me, and he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them yeah. from the end of the earth. That hissing is, means he's going to whistle. That trumpet going to be blown in that day. Go ahead. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. Right. We're going to come with speed swiftly. We're going to repent. Now back to Isaiah 56. Pick up at five. Yeah. All right. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56, and verse 5. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than, than of sons and of daughters. Mm -hmm. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Right. <laughs> Meaning we're going to get the kingdom. And like the scripture said, we're not going to go out no more. Ain't, we ain't no more going into captivity. This is it. We got to repent. This is our last chance. Um, go ahead. Verse 6. Also the sons of the stranger mm -hmm. that joined themselves to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That repent. Go on. To serve him and to love the name of the Lord. To serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Remember, uh, we can't rule over our brothers and sisters with rigor because... We're his servants. Right. His servants. You read in Romans 9. Um, to Israel belongs the service. We are his servants. Go ahead, bro. To be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. So the covenant was only made with Israel. The... Um, Sabbath is between the Lord and the children of Israel. I cannot for the life of me understand why they go to something like this and say, see, he going to accept a stranger. Yeah, he accepted a stranger in Israel. He, he accepted the outcast and the dispersed of Israel. He not accepting the other nations. Mm. Verse 7. Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. So what sacrifices 
um, are we going to be making? What sacrifices are uh, uh, these uh, repentant Israelites going to be making? These burnt offerings. The offering is us. We're offering ourselves. Give me that uh, Psalms 4 and 5. That's what the offering is. Book of Psalms, chapter 4, verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. That's what's going to be accepted. Not rams and bulls and goats, but you being obedient. Psalms 51. Verse 16 and 17. Book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Mm -hmm. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. That's what the sacrifice is. Keep going. Verse 18. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Right, you offering yourself. You are that sacrifice. Since I said that, before we go back to Isaiah, we'll go to Romans 12 and 1. Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Right. Your body is supposed to be holy. That's just like when you go into the law. Like you cannot go into, you can't do the service of the temple with a blemish. This represents your body. When you take it up to a high level, it's showing you this, like this stuff we're reading, some of this stuff, dealing with the law, that is the schoolmaster to lead you to Christ so that you'll understand what he did. But y'all, if y'all don't, you can't stand the laws. Therefore, you don't understand Christ at all. All right, back to Isaiah 56. Book of Isaiah, chapter 56. In verse let's 8. Go over, yeah, let's go with verse 8. We're verse going to wrap this up. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel. All right, stop. So the Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel. So it's saying that the Lord, the God, he's going to gather the outcasts of Israel. We read that if you break in the Sabbath and all these other things, you're going to be cast out. He cast out the northern kingdom of Israel. So he's going to gather the outcasts of Israel. He is he which gathers the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. He saith. Because the Christians, the apologetics, they try to twist this right here. The God that gathers the outcasts of Israel is saying this. He's saying this. Go ahead. Yet. Will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him? So besides those that are already gathered to him, he's going to gather more. What's he talking about? He's going to gather all of Israel. John, um, let's go to the Lord. Because the Lord read this. He understood. John 10 and 16. Book of St. John, chapter 10 and verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Hold on. So other sheep. He always refers to Israel as the sheep. He calls the other nations uh, like, I don't know, other animals. Ravens, lions, all other kinds of stuff. Not, only Israel is referred to as the sheep. And then you have Israel that is goats too. There's a difference between them. 
to go to the ones that's going that's them sacrifices. <laughs> they the wicked Israelites. So sheep I have, which are not of this fold. When you go into Ezekiel and other places, you see that the kingdom is split. At the time of Christ, he's dealing with the Jews. He's dealing with the Jews. So he's saying sheep he has of another fold. He's talking about the northern kingdom and those scattered Israelites. Go ahead. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold. One fold. And one shepherd. One fold and one shepherd. You know what? Hosea 1 and 11. Well, we might as well start at 10. Hosea 1, 10 and 11. I'm going back out there, 56. You go ahead and read that when you get there. Right, book of Hosea ahead. chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, mm -hmm. ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Right, the sons of the living God. Go ahead. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah, the children of Judah, mm -hmm. and the children of Israel, and the children of Israel, both kingdoms, go ahead, be gathered together. They're going to be gathered together. Sheep I have of another fold. Go ahead. And appoint themselves one head. That one head being Christ. Go ahead. And they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Israel. Right. Great shall be that day. I can't wait. Lord's will, I get the kingdom. Lord's will. I'm trying. I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. Now, um... I guess that's going to do it. That's what Isaiah 56 is talking about. It's not talking about the Lord accepting people of other nations. No, it's not talking about that. It never did. All of this has been taught to us by our oppressor, our enemy. Uh, we can't believe them. The Lord calls them the devil. Why? Because they're deceiving us. That's what a devil does. He's a deceiver. So, anyway, there you have it. The understanding of Isaiah 56. We're probably going to do some more topics like this, y'all. I like this type of stuff. And uh, bringing out history with it. So, look forward to more lessons like this. Uh, let's get the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Right, we ought to obey God rather than men. Remember, I said this earlier, our doctrine and understanding comes from the Lord. And then we, we're trees of the Lord. We learn from each other. We can work, we can work these things out, learn from each other. But don't Learn from your enemies. Don't learn from your enemies. You can learn certain things. Like we bring out history. Documented history that lines up with the scriptures. Well, you guys, so you got history out here that's absolutely complete madness. You can't follow that. Like we got the old saying, um, chew the meat and spit out the bones. You don't know. You don't need them bones. So everything has to line up with the scriptures. And... A lot of this stuff, it, it does. So, that's been today's lesson, Isaiah 56. Uh, all praises to the Most High, who was able to bring this out. I try to give you brothers and sisters some understanding, some exhortation on it. Um, I'm Brother Jacob. Brother Jeremiah. And Brother Sirach. With that, y'all, we say, Shalom, Shalom. Most High in Christ bless.